Dylan Osikowski having a standout senior year. Eight rebounds per game, second best to the Big 12. Seventh in steals per game and five double doubles, which is fifth best in the Big 12. And we now welcome in D.O. to game plan. Dylan, it also seems like there's almost a heightened sense of urgency with you over the past few weeks. What would you say is, is starting to come into play with your mentality at this point in your senior year? Uh, I was telling Coach this the other day. Uh, every game, uh, I input tickets for my parents to come. I just see the games just getting shorter and shorter. Uh, just really trying to make the most of, uh, you know, this last month, month and a half of, of regular season games and just make the most of my senior year. Shaka, what has he meant to this program? Oh, he's meant so much. You know, he's, it's hard to believe it's, he's been here for three years now. It's gone so fast. I, I remember going to see him at Tulane, you know, when he decided he was going to transfer and we were recruiting him. But he's been great, you know, coming in the year he sat out, you know, like any other transfer, it's always way more difficult than, than you can imagine. Um, but he hit the ground running last year, did so many great things. It was such an adjustment and a transition for him, and he handled it really, really well. But then this year as a senior, he's been by far our best leader on our team, uh, the most vocal guy. He got to a point, I'm not sure exactly when, but, uh, you know, a few weeks ago where you could just see on his face, he really didn't care what anyone thought. He was going to say what he needed to say, hmm. and particularly to his teammates. And that's so valuable to have on your team. So what do you think is the biggest difference for you on the court and your leadership role when it comes to last season, your first year actually on the court, and this year? Uh, I think last year, to be honest, was just trying to figure out uh, how to play at this level. Um, you know, nothing against uh, the American Conference, but I think the Big 12 is just a whole other animal. Yeah. Uh, night in and night out, you're going against dudes who are as good as you, if not better. Um, so last year, I was just really trying to figure it out. This year, just as much as possible, just trying to help the young guys, uh, trying to help everybody else out, uh, share my knowledge, share what I've learned, and just be that leader that coach is talking about. And it seems like you've been able to keep your conditioning, keep the peak physical shape that you got in before the season, and carry that throughout the course of this year to mm -hmm. this point. What have you learned in terms of the level of stress that goes on you at a program like this, and a lot of the stressors that you dealt with last season, and how you can try to at least alleviate some of that stress on your life in the day-to-day -day grind? Um, I think the biggest thing that I've learned is just to enjoy every, every, little, uh, every little film session, every little practice, every little meeting we have um, between school, trying to, trying to uh, you know, vary your social life, academics, basketball, uh, my girlfriend. Um, it just can be a lot at, uh, at times and just trying to enjoy every little part of that. I've been with uh, Coach Horn a lot, Coach Roos a lot, Tyler a lot. Uh, just trying to manage everything, and I think I've done a really good job at it. How about your life coach, Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> Man, I told him to come out to a game. I, I told him I saw him at all these football games uh, on the sideline and told him, he, there, he, there he goes. <laughs> Burn orange suit. Gotta love that guy. Gotta love it. Uh, so what was the really conversation? Uh, I told him to come out to a game. I told him I'd save a spot for him on the bench. Um, I didn't know he'd be coming to the, to the Oklahoma game, but he told me soon. Uh, when I saw him, I was a little surprised, but glad he was there. What's your relationship like? I mean, what's a typical conversation like between you and McConaughey? Uh, really just tell me uh, to be aggressive every time we, uh, we step out on the floor. Uh, tells me to keep leading. Um, don't go into too much detail. Ask, ask uh, how his family's doing, how his mind doing. Uh, but just short and sweet. It's a pretty cool connection to have. Absolutely. Matthew McConaughey. Sure is. Saw him on the bench. That was a huge win for you guys. Let's now go to our telestration and let's break down some of the finer points of your game. Shaka, take us through Dylan in the low post. Well, he's a, a big option for us, throwing him the ball inside. And uh, he's a guy that can score. If he has one-on-one -on -one coverage, I don't care who it is that's on him. He, he can go get a basket. It could be a seven-footer. It could be an undersized guy. We like Dylan's chances to go score. Now, a lot of teams are giving him a ton of attention, so when he does get single coverage, uh, we want him to go make a move. He's really good at making that, using his body there, turning into that jump hook. Uh, here you see him against Kansas, and, you know, again, when, when we, th we throw the ball in there, sometimes they go double. But if we know on a particular play they're not doubling, sometimes he'll back down and get that position he wants. Does a really good job pivoting. You know, the pivot is a huge part of the game. And then here you see him again all the way from the three-point line. And this kid here, 
uh, is a perimeter guy. He's a three man. <clears throat> so he really doesn't have the chance to guard Dio if Dio really is aggressive. And Dylan does a great job here getting to the middle of the floor, all right, so that he can go make his move. What would you describe as your go-to move, Dylan? Uh, anything with the right. I know once I get uh, back, uh, back my guy down uh, with the left shoulder, right-handed hook, I know that's my bread and butter right there. Let's go to the vision because we've heard a lot. I mean, really since Dylan showed up, just his passing ability, his ability to see the court. He's a really good passer, and he's a willing passer. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's an important part of it, Lowell, because some guys can pass, but, but they don't, want they don't to. really want to. Uh, Dylan's a guy that, you know, we've actually, you know, last year at times told him to pass a little bit less, you know, because he's really good at when he does have guys on him making that open pass, making that right read. Uh, again, a lot of times we'll play through him inside and then just kind of see do they help or not. Here you see him on the, on, the, on the perimeter, but he turns it into a post up. And, I mean, anytime you can get your teammate that type of an open shot, it's yeah. huge. But if you notice on that catch, Matt didn't have to move to the left or right, and the catch was literally at his chin. That's the ideal catch for a shooter to shoot the ball in the basket. And Dylan, this is the last example here. You're getting a double team, and it's good court vision. What are you seeing on this play here? I mean, I immediately see uh, Lawson is already cheating over before the ball even gets in. Um, I see Grimes here sitting in the middle. Uh, we talk about once the ball gets into me, our post spacing. Um, so our guards are doing a good job of it. Snoop is where he's at. Um, with Grimes kind of seeing Eli right here, it's just an easy pass to make right behind his head to Snoop. And Dylan does a really good job completing this pass. It's, you know, you can, you can pause it and you can say, well, Snoop's open, throw it to Snoop. But I'm telling you, in the moment, it's not as easy as, as it might look because, you know, you got two, six, two guys at 6'9", six, 6'10", six, with active hands that are trying to keep you from making that pass. But he does a great job putting it on the money, again, delivering it right to Snoop's chin so that he can shoot it in. Then last but certainly not least, we got the rebounding because we showed the numbers at the beginning of the second uh, segment second in the Big 12 and rebounds per game and, and we're going to see why Dio is so effective on the glass. Well a huge part of rebounding is just effort and Dylan talk about your mentality here this is on the defensive end but talk about your mentality rebounding the basketball. Uh, my mentality every game is to try and get double figure rebounds um, you know with Jackson in there especially Mo last year Mo would take every single one of my rebounds <laughs> every single one um, but I'm just really trying to be as aggressive as I can on both ends here. Here, you know, it's rebounding, it's a fine line because you got to keep your guy from getting it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to hit him, but then you got to get the ball too. So it's a two step process and it takes a high motor. And Dylan's done a really good job of doing that and corralling the rebounds. And this last example is going to be Dio on the offensive glass. So the mentality when the shot goes up is what, Dio? Uh, get to the weak side, find an uh, angle. Yep, and Dylan's done a really good job of cleaning up a lot of those misses. And that's huge for us because it's another way to get the ball in the paint.